Okay, so how is everyone today? Good? Okay, so what were we talking about last time? Division, that's right. The Euclidean, uh, Euclidean division. Okay, good. <clears throat> is today March? Oh my goodness. Okay, so we talked about uh, Euclidean division. Any question about that? Okay, so then uh, today's topic, uh, in the first place, uh, we need to define the uh, following uh, phrases, is that uh, let <coughs> uh, let Let's think about it for a moment. Uh, let A and B be in the naturals. Uh, and uh, is that how I want to say it? Uh, really, I want A, B, and C be in, be, to be in the naturals. If A, B, and C are in the naturals, uh, like so, if A is equal to B multiplied by C, so if A is the, the product of B and C, then uh, you say uh, that B is uh, a proper divisor of A. So B is a proper divisor of A. Uh, now, uh, a synonym for uh, proper divisor is factor. So B is a factor uh, of A. And then uh, even another synonym for uh, proper divisor and factor are synonyms, but even another uh, synonym is uh, just divisor, and that, in my opinion, is unfortunate. Uh, that proper divisor and divisor, at least in this context, are synonyms. And the, the reason why that's unfortunate is because when you perform Euclidean division, uh, the, the group size is called the divisor. So, for example, uh, if we divide, uh, Euclidean divide 23 by 4, uh, then the quotient is 5 and the remainder is 3. The dividend is 23 and the divisor is 4. Uh, but is, is 4 a proper divisor of 23? No, it's not. 4 is not a proper divisor. Uh, so you need to just be slightly careful. Uh, as a result, I'm not going to use... Uh, the only reason why... I write this down as, as if you end up looking elsewhere. So uh, this one I won't use. This one makes me sad. Uh, but it's used elsewhere in other books. So I'll, I'll stick to proper divisor uh, and factor. Uh, besides B being a proper divisor of A, what else? Uh, so is C for that matter. <coughs> so and C. Uh, is a proper divisor. <coughs> of A. Okay, this is denoted. <coughs> uh, this is denoted in the following way, uh, that uh, B divides A, and also C divides A. So pronounced out loud, this one is pronounced B divides A, uh, and this one is pronounced C divides A. So this is uh, in this is the standard notation, as in, uh, like, everywhere that 
you look, you're going to see that. But I'm going to deviate from that notation and instead uh, write it like this. So in this class, so what I'm saying is that this is, this is standard, the vertical bar. <coughs> Uh, but in this class, we'll modify the notation uh, and have it look like this, B. So almost exactly the same, uh, except I'm going to put a little uh, pointy bit in it like that. Okay, so uh, B divides A uh, and C divides A. So this is one of my, uh, uh, you know, everybody has a campaign of things that they want to fix, <laughs> you know. Uh, this is one of the things I'd like to fix in the, in the math world. Uh, the, reason for, the, the reason for this uh, is that uh, that says B divides A, and uh, I... I'd like to be able to say, the, to say both of these, that B divides A, and I'd also like to say, be able to say uh, A is divided by B. Uh, I'd like for, to be able to, in a sense, have it point in whichever direction I want it to point in. But if it's just a vertical bar, then the vertical bar is not pointy, right? Okay. <clears throat> Good. Uh, so, for example, for example, uh, here's a, a question. Uh, two divides uh, twenty-three seventy. So this is a, a question. So this can be evaluated, and its value is either true or false. So how about that statement? Two divides 2370, is it true or false? True. Okay, if it's true, then you need to uh, produce for me uh, a factorization of 2370 where one of the factors is two. So this is true because why? Okay, good. Uh, two, is that right? <laughs> one. Yes. Okay, well, I'll, I'll just trust you. Arithmetic is not my uh, strongest thing. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. So, uh, yes, that's true. So, 2 divides 2370. What else divides 2370? Five. One, well, Five. 1185, right? That's what I was fishing for. Uh, f yes, I agree that 5 divides it, 10 divides it, lots of things divide it. Uh, well, how about, um, is it the case, uh, uh, is it the case that 3 divides 2370? I've heard yes and no. One of these is correct. Very good, right? So then, uh, in case you hadn't learned that up to now, every math major should know the quick test to see if a number is divisible by three. The quick test is you take all of the digits and add them all up, the individual digits. Two plus three is five, plus seven is 12, plus zero is 12. So 2370 is divisible, divisible by 3 exactly when 12 is divisible by 3. So is 12 divisible by 3? Yes. As a result, 2370 is divisible by 3. Neat trick, huh? So uh, this is true. Uh, this is true because, and I have no idea, 2370 is 3 multiplied by, did, you did it, 739? Oh, 790. Okay, great. <clears throat> okay, now let's pick one where uh, it is not true. Uh, so, so how about 
uh, the question is, uh, does 11 divide 2370? So is it true? No, it's not true. And it's false. <coughs> it's false uh, because, well, we can figure this out by doing a Eu Euclidean division of 2370 by 11. So I'll cheat with my calculator real quick. <coughs> it is uh, false because 2370 is 11 multiplied by 215 plus 5. So if you were to divide 2370 by 11, uh, there'd be a non-zero remainder. Good. Any question about that? All right, so now some interesting things. Uh, well, <clears throat> so I asked some, some examples about uh, specific ones. Uh, is it the case uh, that A divides A? Yes, yes. why is that true? Right, A is one times A. A is one times A. Okay, good. Now here's a, another interesting thing, as a result, of, which is a, a, a consequence of this one, if you like. Uh, what about does one divide A? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> this is true for exactly the same reason, right? It's true because A can be expressed as 1 times A. All right. Uh, 3. Uh, does A divide 0? Right. This is true. Uh, this is true uh, because you could express 0 as 0 multiplied by A. So that means that A is a divisor of 0. It's one of the divisors. It's one of the factors, if you like. Okay. Now, this is a consequence of the above, but I want to make sure that it's understood. Does, uh, does 0... Is, is zero a divisor of zero? Okay, so opposite of no? <laughs> right, it, in fact, this is true as a result of the first one, right? Right? A divides A. So of course zero divides zero. Uh, this is true uh, because uh, 0 is equal to whatever you like. I'll just write 1. So 0 is uh, 0 divides 0. Interesting. Okay. So uh, any question about these statements? Uh, now, finally, every math major should know. Uh, does 2 divide 0? Yes. <laughs> uh, does 2 divide 0? The answer is yes. Uh, because what? 0 can be written as 2 times what? 0. So as a result, uh, 2 is a divisor of 0. So please, please let me know. What is the parity of 0? Even. 0 is even. Okay, 1 is odd. 2 is even, 3 is odd, 4 is even, 0 is even. And the reason why I, I am harping on that for just a second is that, uh, well, uh, since y'all are by and large math majors, uh, and probably you use social media of some variety, like Facebook or whatever, uh, 
about every two or three months, uh, I get a I get an image, you know, that says uh, something to the effect of mathematicians can't even decide whether or not zero is even or odd or something like that. No, that's that's not even close to true. Zero is even, and there's no dispute about that. But really, that's just my relatives trying to aggravate me <laughs> by, by, by by sending me, you know, uh, aggravating. Uh, memes on social media. All right. Uh, good. So, uh, fine. Let's consider uh, the set of all divisors. The set of all divisors of some number A uh, in the naturals. Uh, it, is, uh, it is exactly what it sounds like, uh, so that we can take that as the definition. We'll denote this as, uh, denote uh, this as capital D of A. So the divisors of A. Let's have some examples. So please tell me, uh, please calculate uh, the set of all divisors of, say, 2. So it's a set, right? And then the order doesn't matter in sets, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have the convention that when we're writing down this set of divisors, I'm going to write them in, them in increasing order. Uh, so uh, there's 1 and 2, right? That's all the divisors of 2. Uh, what about the divisors of 4? One, two, and four. Uh, how about the divisors of, say, something a little more um, uh, interesting? How about the divisors of 12? Oh, uh, you left one off. One, two, very good, three, four, uh, six, and 12. So notably, when you're when you're listing the when you're listing these out, uh, anytime you write uh, one divisor, you have to, in a sense, write its. It, it it has to have its pair. So what I mean is that notice that one times twelve is twelve, and that uh, what is two paired with six because two times six is twelve, and what is three paired with right because that's 12, uh, but you need to be s just slightly careful because uh, there's a, perhaps, a slightly unexpected thing about it. What's the set of divisors for nine? One, one three, and nine. Uh, so one is paired with nine, but what's three paired with? Uh, itself, right? So you've got to remember that something can pair with itself. Okay, fine. Uh, any question uh, about this? Okay, uh, now here's uh, a disturbing one. Uh, fine, how about uh, the divisors of zero? It's all of them, right? All the naturals. Right, because look at three. A, does A divide zero? It does, for every A. That means that uh, zero divides zero because zero is zero times zero. Does one divide zero? Yes, because zero is one times zero. Does 2370 divide zero? Yes, because zero is 2370 multiplied by zero. Ah, that's disturbing, a little bit. Uh, so. In fact, every natural divides zero. Interesting. OK, so uh, fine. Uh, another another um, way to, to go about uh, doing this, uh, another definition 
is that uh, we could find the set of all common divisors. So common divisors, uh, the set of all common divisors is we'll say let, uh, now we have two numbers, uh, two naturals, A and B. Uh, the set of all common divisors uh, is we'll denote that with uh, capital C of A and B and that will be the intersection of the set DA and the set DB. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, for example, uh, let's calculate, say, uh, the common divisors of what would be fun to do. Uh, I don't know. How about four and ten? And this is the set of all common divisors. So the way to do this is to, is to calculate the set of divisors of 4 and also the set of the divisors of 10 and then to calculate the intersection. Okay. So the set of all divisors of 4, we already did that. That was 1, 2, and 4. And the set of all divisors of 10 is what? 1, 2, 5, and 10. Okay, so then uh, as a result uh, of this, of those considerations, the common divisors of 4 and 10 are what? 1 and 2, right? The intersection of those two sets. Fine. Any question about this so far? Okay, good. So now, what, what topic am I sort of obviously leading up to? Greatest, Greatest common divisor. Okay, but uh, you need to be exceptionally careful about this because I virtually guarantee even if you know what greatest common divisor is, and even if you could calculate it here and now, I virtually guarantee that you do not understand what the word greatest means. I just, I virtually guarantee it. All right. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> uh, fine. So, remark, we want to talk about Uh, greatest common divisor. We want to talk about greatest common divisor, uh, but uh, the word greatest, uh, this specific word, uh, is in danger. Of confusing us. Okay, so now I'm going to try and uh, avert the danger. Uh, okay, after reviewing this uh, part of the notes, uh, I realized uh, that I didn't have the definitions here correct. Uh, in fact, it was like a, a mixture of two different uh, kinds of things. Another thing that's kind of like a partially ordered set uh, called a pre-order 
and it uh, it just wasn't uh, it wasn't right. So now I'm going to fix this part. Okay, so let uh, x be a non-empty set. Non-empty set, uh, and let alligator uh, be a function from uh, set x cross uh, set x uh, to true or false. Now, when I was uh, discussing this in class. Uh, uh, I went on to state uh, that in fact alligator uh, doesn't need to be defined on the entire Cartesian product, uh, but that's not that's not true. Uh, in fact, uh, as a as a correction to what was in the notes, so correction. Yes, uh, alligator is defined on all of uh, x cross x. In fact, what I suspect I, I had in my mind, uh, uh, what I might have been thinking, uh, is that... Uh, well, we want uh, alligator usually to be true, uh, either true or false, uh, for each pair, but uh, in in one order or another. But uh, that might not be the case. So to be clear, uh, suppose the following are true. Suppose we denote. Uh, alligator uh, evaluated at x, y as x alligator y so that it looks like uh, an inequality symbol uh, we uh, need the following things suppose we denote this uh, and we have the following one Uh, x uh, is alligator to x uh, for all x in set x. Uh, this is called the reflexivity uh, property. Uh, two. If x alligator y and x, sorry, uh, y alligator z so if those two things are true then uh, x alligator z uh, this is called uh, the transitive property. And if we have three, uh, if x is alligator y and y is alligator uh, x. If both of those are true, then uh, in fact it must be the case that x and y are the same. They must be the same thing. Uh, and uh, this is called the anti-symmetry property.
Okay, so in, in such a case, uh, this is called then uh, set x with alligator uh, is called a partially ordered set. So uh, in, in class, in lecture, uh, this one was uh, left out. Uh, it's a partially ordered set. So if, uh, in addition, we have four, that uh, <clears throat> for all uh, for all x y in uh, in x uh, it must be the case that either x is alligator y. Uh, or y is alligator x. So uh, that means that uh, either this one is true or that one is true. Uh, this uh, definition is saying that uh, all uh, elements are comparable. Uh, if in addition that, then uh, set x with alligator uh, is called a totally ordered set. set. <clears throat> okay. So for example, <clears throat> uh, a typical example is that uh, in the naturals, with less or equal, and now that's just regular less or equal, okay? So this is which, uh, it, so in the first place, is it, is it a partially ordered set? Is, is less or equal reflexive and transitive? It is. So that means that this, uh, the naturals with the usual less or equal is, is a is a partially ordered set. Is it also totally ordered? Yeah. Yes, because every pair of naturals can be compared. So this is uh, a totally ordered set. Uh, okay. So now we want to try and think of. Uh, we want to try and think of a set and an alligator uh, that's not totally ordered because usually for math majors taking a 2000 level course uh, you're familiar with plenty of total orders because the order on the reals, the usual order on the reals is a total order and therefore the naturals and the integers and the rationals they all inherit that and it's a total order. Uh, so now we want to try and think of something that's a partial order only partially ordered. Uh, so in order to sort of help us there, 
So uh, to visualize, to visualize uh, uh, partially ordered sets and totally ordered sets, uh, we'll use will use uh, arrows. So for example, let's consider uh, the set uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, 4. So this will be set x. Uh, and let's consider set x with the usual order. On the, on the reels. Uh, okay, so I'm going to write the numbers here. So we have uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So by arrows, I mean the following. Uh, is 0 less or equal to 0? Yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an arrow from 0 to 0. That means that 0 is less or equal to 0. Is 1 less or equal to 1? Yes. Is 2 less or equal to 2? Of course. So uh, with the usual order, every well, with, with any order, you have to have this self-loop, uh, this self-arrow. That's, that's reflexivity. Uh, re reflexivity. Uh, now, is 0 less or equal to 1? Yes. 0 is less or equal to 1, so that means I'll, we'll draw an arrow from 0 to 1. Uh, is uh, 0 less or equal to 2? Yeah. So I'll draw an arrow from 0 to 2. Is 0 less or equal to 3? Yeah. yeah. OK. 0 is less or equal to 3. And 0 is less or equal to 4. OK. Nice. Uh, fine. <clears throat> so we're going to draw all the arrows. So now, what, what other arrows do we need to draw? 1 to 2, because 1 is less or equal to 2. What else? 1 to 3, right? 1 to 3. What else? 1 to 4. Good. What else needs to be drawn? 2 to 3. Uh, two to four, yes. And three to four. That's pretty busy, isn't it? Look at all those arrows. Uh, now, um, busy. Now, be because, because that's a total order, because it's a total order, uh, and, and in particular because it is an, at least a partial order, that means that it's transitive. So um, on the one hand, you can see that 0 is less or equal to 4 because we drew an arrow from 0 to 4. But because of the transitivity, I'd like for you to observe that we could go from 0 to 3 and then 3 to 4. So we could delete that arrow, right? Yeah. So now what I want to do is I want to delete uh, all arrows that are consequences of other arrows. So what I'm saying is like, for example, uh, this long arrow from 0 to 4 is a consequence of the two arrows uh, 0 to 3 and 3 to 4, right? It's a that's, a, that's a consequence of transitivity. Okay, so now if you carry this process to its logical conclusion, and you delete all possible arrows uh, that uh, can be found to be consequences of other arrows, what will it, uh, what will it look like? Uh, 
Well, we have to have all the self loops, the reflexive loops. Uh, one, two, three, four. So it's symmetric, so we have to have this reflexive, the reflexive loops. And then we can uh, just draw, well, 0 is less or equal to 1, 1 is less or equal to 2, 2 is less or equal to 3, and 3 is less or equal to 4. Okay, great. And then if we say, so from here to here, this thing that we did, this is called a transitive reduction. Transitive reduction. And then if we, uh, if we get rid of the reflexive loops and we just say, yes, we, just, we understand that they're there, but we're not going to bother drawing them, <clears throat> then uh, the result looks like this. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So if we get rid of the reflexive loops, then it looks like this. 0, less or equal 1, 1, less or equal 2, 2, less or equal 3, 3, less or equal 4. And yes, someone said it, they're in a straight line. Yes. So uh, the order, the order that uh, is the usual order on the naturals uh, is even stronger. It's a partial order, but it's even stronger than that. It's a total order, but it's even stronger than that. It's a linear order. Uh, and then this is a representation of it. They're literally in a straight line. Couldn't be any simpler. Uh, any question about this? So what I want to impress upon you is that you're, you're accustomed to this kind of order thing, but the order thing that you know uh, is as, uh, as simple as possible, <laughs> in a sense. Okay. So now here's the surprise, maybe. I kind of foreshadowed it pretty hard. Something else uh, is, a, is a partial order. What's a partial order uh, besides, the, besides the linear order on the naturals? What's another uh, partial order on the naturals? We already talked about it today. Division. Divisibility is a partial order. So in the naturals, Equipped with this is a partially ordered set. Ordered set. So uh, I won't uh, do it here and now because I'll probably make it uh, an exercise. Uh, so for, for your homework, <clears throat> Uh, a homework exercise will be to uh, show uh, show that this is reflexive. That's pretty obvious. Reflexive. Slightly less obvious is to show uh, that this is transitive. show that it's transitive. Uh, and now I, what I want you to see is that uh, supposing that uh, you, you end up proving those things on the homework and, and you convince yourself that it's uh, partial, uh, that, that, it, that it's at least a partially ordered set, uh, now we want to show that it's not total. Uh, but this is not total. Uh, the, re the, the reason why is uh, we, just need, we just need to get two items uh, that uh, are comparable. Uh, th that where it, it's, it, 
What am I trying to say? We can just show it by an example. Uh, using the usual order, the linear order, uh, is it the case, let's consider the two numbers uh, 23 and 70, so 23 less or equal uh, 70, uh, or mm, 70 less or equal 23. So is one of those true? Yes. Yeah. So this one is true. And the other one is false. And notice that for the linear order, there's nothing special about the numbers 23 and 70. That's in fact true for any uh, naturals, A and B. It's, it's either the case that A is less or equal to B, either that's true, or uh, B is less or equal to A. Uh, but for, for this one, let's consider. How about uh, 23 uh, is a divisor of 70? Is this true? No, that's false. Uh, how about uh, 70 is a divisor of 23? Oh, that's false. So false and false. So the fact that uh, both of these are false means that uh, this is an order, because uh, a partial order, because it's reflexive and transitive, but it's not a total order, because it's not the case that uh, one of, at least one of these is true. OK. So let's have an example. Suppose that we uh, factor. Uh, we want to make a factor tree. Of 12. OK. So that is to say, I want to have a, uh, a little tree of factors uh, for 12. So we uh, can do the following. So 12, <coughs> uh, what do I want to say? We've got 12. What are uh, some of the, one way to factor 12? I, I agree, but I want all the composite ones as well. How about I get, I get us started? Uh, so how about uh, 3 and 4? Now, by these arrows, by writing uh, 3 to 12 like that, again, what I mean uh, we mean uh, that uh, 3 divides 12. So 3 divides 12, uh, 4 divides 12. Okay, so now let's consider 3. Uh, besides besides uh, the reflexive case, what, what will divide 3? 1. Okay, so there's a 1 down here. Uh, 1 divides that 3. Okay, how about uh, 4? 2 will divide it, so I need to write uh, 2 somehow down here, so 2, like so. Uh, should there, there's one obvious arrow that's missing right now. 1 to 2, right? Uh, now there's, yes, I heard someone say it, there's a, another composite factor that's missing. Right, four, three and four are paired up. Two's not paired up, so two needs to go with six. Uh, so I'll write six right here. Now what, uh, so six divides 12. Six divides 12. Uh, now what arrows need to go to six? Uh, two needs to go to six. And what else? Three needs to go to six. And what else? One needs to go to six. Yeah, 
Well, uh, I, uh, let's, let's make a, a complete graph, right? So one goes to four, one goes to 12. Lovely, isn't it? Are we missing any? Ah, two goes to 12, yes, thank you. Now are we missing any? Okay, so now uh, this, this I, I hope, includes all the arrows. That's my intention. Now let's make a transitive reduction of this so that uh, what's an example of an arrow we could delete? Almost all of them, right? A, a, lot of the, a lot of arrows coming from one could be deleted. Uh, so let's, let's make a transitive reduction. So 12, 6, 3, 4, 2, 1. Okay, so 1 needs to go to what? Needs to go to 2. And what else? 3. three. It's got to go to 3. Do, do, I need a, do I need 1 to have an arrow to 4? No, why not? Because two, 2 divides 4. Uh, so what else? 2, two to 6. <clears throat> what else? 6 to 12. What else? 4 to 12 and 3 to 12. So that's a, a transitive reduction. Beautiful. OK, now what I'd like for you to observe is that, is that flat? Is, is it, uh, it, can it, can it be put in a straight line? It can't. It can't. So, uh, so not only is this, uh, because of this reason, uh, divisibility is not total. It's also not linear. Yes? Do you need to include 3 to 6? Uh, so do you? Is, let's, let's put it to the class. I guess we do have to put 3 to 6, right? Do we? Uh, let's think about it for just a second. Uh, well, yes, we have to because 3 needs to be comparable to 6. <clears throat> uh, interesting. OK, but uh, I just want you to see the, the point is there's a, there's a lot of neat things about transitive reductions and things like that. I'm just glossing over it. But that's not really the, the point of the uh, lecture. The point is that I want you to see that it can't be flattened. It can't be put in a straight line. OK, now, here's the, here's the punchline. Uh, you could imagine that this is just one part, uh, one part of the, uh, of the order on the naturals, where the order is defined by division. So there's something that would be above 12. What's something that would be above 12? 24, 36, 120, right? All of those would be above 12. Now my question to you is, is that in every graph, which one will be the least? One. one. One's going to be the least. There's going to be no arrows going to one besides the reflexive arrow. There's not going to be anything going to one. Right? So in any uh, graph of this partial order, uh, no arrows will point to one. they all leave one.
So what I want you to see from this is that uh, this, is, this is special, and it has a name. Uh, therefore, one is the least. It's always going to be the least natural. Uh, in fact, uh, it's not so important for, for us, uh, but I'll parenthetically note that it's referred to as the inf. And yes, by that I mean the infimum. So here's, a, here's the question. So if you look at the example on the previous page, you know, we could continue going up, you know, 12, 24, 36, all the way up. And if we go all the way up, 120, 120 million, 120 million, 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 what's the natural that's all the way at the top? There's infinitely many of them. Is there one all the way at the top? Yes. There is one all the way at the top. There is a greatest natural. So what is the greatest natural? No. What's the greatest natural? Uh, that is to say, uh, we want a natural. We want a natural that when you compare it uh, to, to this, this natural that we're searching for, uh, it always divides. So like 2370 will, will divide uh, this number. And uh, so will 13, which is prime. It divides this number. Ah, but we can't have, well, we need, we need it to be the case that every prime divides this natural, every single one. one. That's, now you have it the other way around. One, one divides every natural. We well, want it to be. Ha, ah, zero. What's the greatest of all naturals? The greatest of all naturals is zero. Now, that's a little disturbing, isn't it? It's a little bit disturbing, but you need to understand what, what, greatest, what, what, what is meant by greatest. So now I'm going to say, I'm going to change this scare quoted least, and I'm going to change it uh, to it is division least. Now what is the division? greatest natural. The division greatest natural is zero because we already said that A divides zero for all A in the naturals. What's the greatest natural? <laughs> zero. That's disturbing, isn't it? So. Uh, what you've got to understand that the word greatest is not referring to the linear order that you're accustomed to. With the linear order, what's the greatest natural? With the linear order. There isn't a greatest natural in the linear order, right? Because if you were to say, ah, I think this one's the greatest natural. Well, that couldn't be right because you could add one to that. And that's still natural and it's greater. So it, there is no <clears throat> So there is no There is no less than <clears throat> greatest natural or less or equal greatest
but zero is the division greatest natural. So now, now that I've inoculated against you, inoculate, inoculated you against the error, uh, it, it, the, the misunderstanding in the word greatest, when you say greatest common divisor, are we talking about the linear order? No, we're not talking about the linear order. We're talking about what? The division order. So now uh, we're going to rush. In 30 seconds, we're going to write down the, great, the definition of the greatest common divisor. Uh, because we have, to, we have to go soon. So GCD, uh, from naturals cross naturals to naturals, is defined in the following way. GCD of, uh, GCD of A and B is defined in the following way. So in the first place, if A uh, is greater than B, so now by greater than, I mean the linear order. That's the linear order. If A is greater than B, uh, then uh, the definition will be that it's GCD of B and A. So that means you can think of that like if the numbers were not in the correct linear order, then we'll switch the arguments to put them in the correct linear order. Uh, then the answer is B in the case that A is equal to 0. And uh, it is equal to the GCD <coughs> of, let's think about it for a minute, R and A. Uh, so this is otherwise, otherwise. And this is where. Uh, B is equal to A multiplied by Q plus R. So the remainder of B divided by A. Any questions about it? Okay, so we're going to implement this uh, in MATLAB. Have a nice Thursday. <coughs> A times Q plus R. B, uh, it's, it's the remainder of Euclidean division of B by A.